excited about this new edition of Strategic Command that just came out, World War II, World at War. I've been playing Strategic Command uh, since, I think, the first one from the year 2000. And I've always enjoyed uh, World War II grand strategy games. And I'm going to take a look at this one here. And it's really not just a, an intro or anything like that. I'm specifically doing this video as a tutorial for players who wish to beat the Allied AI playing the Germans and the Italians. And I've had success with all editions of it with the strategy that I use. And it's strange that I can watch some of the major YouTubers, the war gamers, I guess the poster boys for some of these companies that do these playthroughs. And I'm just appalled at the strategy they use. And it, it's, it's kind of humorous because several of them just do exactly the same thing. And I'm going to show you how I win as the Germans. And that's what you use against the AI or against average or weaker players. Uh, if you're playing by email against a very strong allied player, you're not going to, uh, the Axis are not going to win. It's just how it is. It's how it was during the wartime. But it is very essential uh, to play Germany and Italy a certain way. And here in this part, you have Japan also, but I'm really going to focus on the European front and how to win. So let's get to it. Oh, uh, this is... This is really interesting because now you have to, you're fighting a global war. And it's very important for the Axis to work together as a team. That's the only way you're going to be able to win. But I was going to make a video with the showing different parts of my game playing as the Germans. But since this game here came out, I can pretty much use the same strategy on the European side. And I'll show you, and I'll show you also how many players are going it about the wrong way playing the Germans. If you look at the situation, uh, Germany begins at war with Poland. And I'm not going to do a playthrough like move by move. This is mainly a tutorial of how to win, and I'm going to show you different screenshots of different turns to see where I'm at. And uh, Germany is at war with Poland. And uh, you got a very good army. You got two tank units here. And the goal is to take Warsaw uh, in two turns. And it's pretty simple. I mean, you can play it through. Uh, anybody can pretty much do that. Uh, and what you, what you do is you take Warsaw by the second turn. And by the second turn, you just use units that will capture Warsaw, like the two Panzer units, but any other army units, like these white ones here, on the second turn, try to put them on railroad tracks. Try to put as many units on our railroad tracks because you want to be operating them to the west as quickly as possible. Now, I'm not going to go through the invasion of Poland here. That's just going to be time-consuming. You can practice and do it yourself, but... Actually, in this version, it's a lot easier to take Warsaw on two turns than in the original European War one, but it, that's easy in itself. Now, as for the naval war, I usually always will move the units that are out at sea back towards Germany. And in this case, well, here you also have the Graf Spee. We're going to start moving it back. We're not going to stay on the convoy lines, and we're not going to be battling the Royal Navy because the German situation is very critical at this point, and Germany has a tremendous advantage, and time is very precious. The goal for Germany is not to just sit back and build up its forces 
uh, upgrade its units and then attack, it has to be on a constant attack the first few turns immediately until France is defeated. Regardless of the weather, this is why I'm saying when you attack Poland, once Poland is just about finished, you start operating units as quickly as possible, first to the Dutch border and all around the West, because you're going to launch an invasion of Western Europe, uh, the Low Countries and France, as soon as possible, preferably starting by turn three, four, five. It does not matter whether it's raining or snowing, because... And you don't need to wait to make upgrades on your units because the, the French and British units are bad. They're terrible. They're weak. So what you want to do is you want to just attack as quickly as possible. And another thing I see people doing is they're playing the Italians very poorly in the beginning also. They start massing troops along the French border like the French are going to be able to do anything against the Italians. Your main goal is the Italians before the war begins, before they enter the war, is number one, move the Italian fleet into the Adriatic Sea because as soon as war is declared, it's quite possible that an aggressive French AI is just going to try to cripple your fleet before France surrenders. So to avoid that, just move all of them into the Adriatic, kind of like this. Simple, just do that. And uh, I keep the submarine unit just in case something tries, you know, looking for you and all that. You got the subunit to uh, do a job. But like I'm saying, this is the same strategy I would use in the European war game where the map is the bigger scale. But actually, some things here make the game actually easier than the other. Although, this is the recipe to use for the original game also. Because what Germany's goal is to win the war in Europe is to quickly knock out France as soon as possible. And my end goal date, the latest, is in May of 1940. And it can be done. As long as you you keep applying pressure. Knock out France towards the end of May 1940 then you're going to have a time period where you can prepare your units and upgrade them and spend some money and then launch Operation Sea Lion, which Germany must invade Britain in order to win. Because, like in any other war game, you don't have to be a military genius to win. What wins is money. The more money you have, the more think troops you can build, the more things you can do. And Germany needs to knock out, well, Britain's not going to surrender. They're going to move to Canada. In this case, they can move to India and all that. But you have to get Britain, the British units, or any possibility of any allied units using the British Isles as a base to attack Europe. Germany must capture Great Britain. And that way, by the time... You go to war with the Soviet Union, uh, you're going to have a big, Germany's going to have a big advantage. It's a grind. It's going to be a grind, but because Germany has more money, simple math and economics, uh, Germany will defeat the Soviet Union, but only after it captures Great Britain. So therefore, it is very important that the first few turns, the first year, is extremely critical that Germany pretty much makes the right moves. You don't have to, you know, be an exceptional general, but, you know, just using that grand strategy should do the trick. Now let's get back to Italy. Like in this case, your first goal is, is to move as many armies and headquarter unit towards the Egyptian border. So what I start doing even from turn one is, well, here in this case, we have a fully, a full army here. I, we, I don't think we have that in the other game. You have to develop. So you just transport, start transporting them to Libya. They're not at war with Britain, so. And another thing is, is this garrison here is actually going to go into uh, Tobruk, 
eventually once the armies start moving into Egypt. So you're going to have a... I don't think there's... You just hit P here. No, there's no partisan activity here. Eventually, this army is going to move towards the front, too. I want to get this army, uh, the one in Tobruk, the one that I'm moving here, three armies. It's going to be two headquarters eventually and the armor unit. And then eventually operate these two Italian air units once they're fully uh, operational and ready to go. All of them are going to Libya. So by the time war with England begins, you're going to have a full army ready to march into Cairo. Not that they're going to win, but they're going to give the English, such the British, such a hard time and probably kill a few units that by the time the Africa Corps arrives, it's going to be an easy victory into Egypt and into the Middle East. That's very important. A lot of players don't do anything with the Italian units. They start moving them too late, and then the British fleet can start intercepting, and then there's a bloodbath with the Italian Navy. You don't want to lose units like that. So uh, take advantage of the situation. And here, in this case, you know, you're going to reinforce this. You're going to do that over a sequence of a few turns and this armor unit. Because they're going, all you need to defend against a possible French attack is just this Italian core here. That's all that's necessary. You don't need an army. You don't need to attack France. Because Germany is going to be doing that right from the beginning and a start. So, and as far as these sea units go, we're going to move them towards Narvik. I usually move them up to the northern part of Norway here. Eventually, in, in April uh, 1940, Norway becomes German, and then you can start using ports. It's very risky to come back through the North Sea without engaging the British home fleet. So generally, they'll hang around Norway until the Battle of the North Sea starts, you know, just before Operation Sea Lion, and then eventually they're going to be able to join up with the rest. As for this fleet here, I usually move the entire German fleet in the beginning. Uh, right into the Baltic, and I keep a submarine around here just to prevent, you know, just to harass anything trying to hurt uh, the iron ore route here. But this is basically what I do for Germany. And the income is very low in the beginning. But you attack Poland, and after two turns, you know, and you take Warsaw on two turns and then start moving units over as quickly as possible. There is no rule that says you have to fight the phony war and do nothing for months. And that's absolutely incorrect to do that. The key is, if you can take Holland, every turn you're going to be receiving income. A little bit is better than not, rather than nothing. So wouldn't you rather receive more money every turn? That gives you more money for eventual research, uh, rebuilding new units and all that. So at this point, upgrading is not that important. What's important is, is to get to Paris as quickly as possible. So let me now look at, let's go to, like I said, I'm going to be loading different stages of the game. Okay, let's go to September 29th. I believe that's turn two. And everything is on... No, no advantages at all. It's all intermediate. It's just a... All right, this is the end. Uh, okay, this is the end of the second turn. It's September 29th. And my army has taken Warsaw. My units are sailing, continuing on towards Norway. And I've played the Japanese also, but that's not that important at this point. It's uh, I'm just concentrating on a European strategy. And as you notice, already at the end of turn two, I have already operated these four units towards the Dutch and Belgian border. And I've moved a few air units, a couple bombers, a fighter. I'm trying to get as quickly as possible over here. And I've put these other units here on uh, these tank units on railroad hexes because I'm going to operate them on turn three towards the Western Front. And it's only September 19th. It's, it's, it's just barely uh, almost October 1939. 
and I'm already almost ready to hit the Western Front. And the same thing over here with Italy. I moved all the the ships here. I've upgraded. I'm continuing to upgrade these units. I, I mean, reinforce these units so they can be moved to Libya. And, and of course, you honor the Ribbentrop, Molotov-Ribbentrop Act. You don't want to get into any trouble with the Soviets in the beginning. So in here, there's a chance that those Poles may surrender or they may not. You may have to kill another unit or two in the next turn, but it really makes no difference. All you do is you just lose a little Polish income for now, but it really doesn't affect your grand strategy. Your grand strategy is, is to attack France as quickly as possible. Now it's about this time here also that the British are going to be receiving their, the BEF is going to arrive into Europe, so you, you do not want to attack until they do. As soon as they do, that's when you attack. Okay, this is, an, and I'm, and of course in this case, uh, moving units towards Nanning because it, it recommends you attack Nanning, but I'm still exper you know, experimenting with a Japanese strategy. This is not the point of this video. But it is going to be very important. It's going to be a more of a naval strategy and a nutrition strategy against China. But above all, they're all going to have to work together. And eventually, eventually when there's going to be a war with Russia, I would think uh, Japan needs to help Germany in the invasion of Russia and use its powerful fleet to defend against the Americans. And I can just imagine the AI is so aggressive with its fleet, it's not going to be much of a problem defeating the American fleet, you know, defensive and, and counterattack at key points. It's going to be interesting when the Japanese receive some units here, like their special forces units. That's what's going to be used to attack the Philippines and all those oil-rich areas. So it's very important to capture uh, areas with economic value. But let's get back aside to Europe. This is turn two, and let's go to turn three. Same thing. Okay, so Poland didn't surrender, but they will next turn, like I said, it, it, it just... It, it that really doesn't matter because I already operated the majority of the army, the Panzer units, and a lot of air units have already been operated through Western Front, October 27th, this turn three. And I've already declared war and attacked the Netherlands with a couple of few infantry units here. Now, when you attack the Netherlands as the Germans, our Belgium will mobilize and more likely they will join the Allies immediately, if not, either a turn or two later, it doesn't really matter when they attack. But 99% here in this case, they will. And the British Army is already, the BF is already here, and what are they going to do? They're going to move into Belgium, <laughs> just as they did historically. And it doesn't matter attacking in the rain, because these units are weak. Your lift buff is not that necessary. You're going to grind it out for the next few months, but by the time spring comes, you're going to be very close to Paris, if not almost in there. So that's what's so important about playing Germany this aggressively in the beginning. The Allies do not have anything that can hurt you. So it's not like you're making a bold, risky move. There's really, this is no risk at all. This is, this is easy. And turn three, I finally built these, this headquarters and this army unit, and they're ready to be transported to Libya. It's just Italy has very little income, and it just it takes a while to rebuild. Like I said, this unit here is all that's needed against the French, and the French are going to have other things to worry about because they're just mobilizing and rebuilding and trying to strengthen themselves, and I'm already attacking the West. All right. 
right, let's go to turn four. All right, it's November 24th, 1939. A lot of rain, except some parts here. And now, yeah, you do have bad weather, but it doesn't matter. It rains on the enemy, too. And uh, the war against Holland continues. At this point, uh, you get, all you got to do is capture the Hague. There you go. No, a bomber can't do that. It's, it's raining over here. But it doesn't matter. We just attack. It's easy. And over here, like in this fashion, now over here, you declare war against Luxembourg. And like I said, you don't wait to upgrade, you know, to strengthen unions. You attack immediately. Let's go over here. Oh, a very powerful French unit. So, you're already, right there, already cut a hole, and I'm only a few hexes away from Paris. So, and Amsterdam is going to, and Holland is going to fall. And you're going to start moving units up front here. And you're going to operate more units over to this front. You're going to move air units over here. And you only leave, I only, I leave the Slovak unit, uh, one unit in Warsaw, and the Königsberg garrison. That's all that's necessary to keep in the eastern front for now. Well, I'm saying... Attack. Attack in the West. Don't give them a chance to build up. And now it's time to move the Italian headquarters and just continue moving units towards Libya and just continue the attack. And, now, and the fleet here is already going to be approaching Darwick as well as the Graf Spee. And they're going to be used to help in Operation Sea Lion so let's go to another continuation. All right, it's uh, December of 1939. Uh, Holland has surrendered. Luxembourg surrendered. Uh, the Pans is already attacking in the Arden area. In the center, it just somehow... Now watch this. Okay, the headquarter unit is already on its way to um, Libya. This army unit's going to be going too. Then I'm going to build this, Ita rebuild this Italian Air Force and move them to Libya to get ready for the war with England. That's the thing. You have to move people, you have to move the units to critical areas, staging areas, ASAP. You don't have the luxury of waiting and not as the Axis. And the Allies, yes, they, they are playing a waiting game, but not, not Germany. But look at this sweet deal here at what happened. The fighter armor is gone. And now I have a British unit up here. I just hope they don't flee. Nothing much I can do at this point, but... Uh, just keep on moving in and and just start attacking some units here. I mean, there's all kinds of things. It's even though it's snowing, but you're getting close to Paris. And you just keep on moving your units forward and just keep on relentlessly attacking until you capture the city. 
is that these units are going to be operating back to the front. Graf Spray is going to be heading to join with these guys, and they shouldn't encounter anything, and there's nothing, nothing has come my way yet. So now I'm going to show you getting into 1940. Okay, February 1940, British Army is trapped in Brussels along with the other two units. I have my two Panzer units at the gates of Paris. I'm going to be setting up some airborne units in a bit. They're going to be coming the next turn. And already, February 1940, I'm at the gates of Paris here. Yeah, I dropped an airborne unit over here uh, to cut any reinforcements for coming over here. Uh, these French are they're going to stay in their Maginot line because they, they just love their Maginot line. And everything here is already falling apart. And it's only February 1940. And I'm already collecting income from Holland and Luxembourg. And you see the French fleet is already looking... Whenever the AI is a sign of desperation, I think the French fleet is just looking to do some damage to German units, but I'm keeping them uh, in the Baltic Sea, so it's not going. nothing's going to happen. They can look all they want. And over here, I already got the Italian Army unit uh, at three armies, two headquarters. That's plenty to start invading uh, Egypt, and I Italy is just on the verge. Yeah, 70, okay, 77 modern mobilization, so it's pretty close to declaring war, probably another couple turns or something, it's gonna declare war, and I'll be immediately have the units to march into Egypt and threaten it. Like I said, uh, Italy, it's not gonna be able to take Egypt, but it's gonna do a lot of damage to the English army, and it's going to keep England, it'll put a lot of pressure on them in the Middle East immediately. And when the Africa Corps arrives, that's when the coup de grace can be launched at that point. So still the strategy is, is to knock out Paris and the early, the better of February. This could even happen by early May. May is usually the date that I capture Paris from playing the European War version. But here it seems to be going really well, so we'll see what happens. And once again, my fleet is waiting up here. I think in the following turn, uh, Oslo, Norway, and Denmark will fall. And I'm already collecting a lot of money. And just to show here in Asia, I've started upgrading a few carrier units, and I'm pretty much ready to crush nanning and i've killed a couple units over here so but this is the german strategy to use you don't have to wait around for the phony war uh it's not beneficial to do that uh the french and the british are very ill prepared at that stage, and it looks like here I may be able to wipe out all the British units, so there's gonna be less waiting for me in England, but I'm not sure, less hexes, they could fill it up and it may be harder. It's a lot easier invading England, possibly invading England in a strategic command Europe game. But this is at the, po the point I'm at right now, playing the Germans, and it's mainly to illustrate that, you know, watching other players, the way they've been playing, they are just playing Germany too slow. And just what are they waiting for? This is a war. Uh, throw those punches while you can and go for the knockout. And this is really what Germany is doing, is going for a knockout. Knock out France quickly and then uh, get ready to invade England. While over in this front here, he put the pressure on the Middle East. And, 
And with this game here also, you know, the Japanese are going to cooperate in a way. But like I said, that's all you need to defend against France is one unit here, Italian unit. And the only war that Italy's going to be concentrating on is the war against Egypt, British Egypt. No, do not go to war with Greece. Ignore that. That's not necessary. <laughs> you don't want to make these blunders that Mussolini did. Uh, the Germans have to work together with, you know, the Italians, the Germans, and here the Japanese. They all have to work together, the Axis units. So I think with the information I've given you in this video, uh, anybody playing the Germans, whether it's in this game or in the war in Europe, I use the strategy, and I guarantee you will be successful against the AI or against weaker players. Some of them play better or worse, the AI, less experience. You're going to do well. And for those who have been having, getting annoyed by the AI and all that, don't worry about it. If you do what I tell you here, you're going to win. You, your troops are going to be marching through London. And I will make subsequent videos and show you the progress of this game here. I may also show you the different stages of the war in Europe game that I had in the months to show you how I started out the same way and then I came to dominate Europe in every 1947, but I totally dominated Europe, Eurasia, and the Middle East uh, with this strategy here. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. It's mainly intended to be informative how to. And like I said, here we are, February 1940. There's a large Italian army ready to go into Egypt. Uh, France is on the verge of collapse. Uh, just going to be reinforcing some units, uh, pushing this way. And I can take Paris pretty quickly, I think. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you've learned something, and thank you for watching.